ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the People's Choice Podcast the episode. Choice. <laughs> We're not in the People's Choice Podcast episode, whatever. We are back with Don't Hate My Take. You're probably going to hate it, though. <laughs> you you might hate my take, but you, you, know, know, you, know, you, you definitely going to uh, hate my, my boys over here. Yeah. This is my boy right here for all y'all who don't know. But for all people that do know, this is my boy Derek Murchison. Yeah. How you doing? We located in the Murchison area, too, you know. It's always good to change the venue from time to time. <laughs> oh, oh, well, I mean, like, I'm truly honored right now. I feel like I'm sitting down with Steve and Nate, showed whoever, the big dogs, whoever you want to put it. Like, I done made it. Hey, mom. <laughs> and y'all can always, of course, check this out on YouTube, Spotify for the audio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Facebook, all over. So, Everywhere. <laughs> so thank you for being a part of episode two. Oh, man, like I said, man, I'm absolutely honored, man. Like, get me on here, hey. I, you might love my take, you might hate my take. Either way, I do have a take. You name it, I got it. Exactly. And you know, don't get us, don't get me wrong. Our take is important, but we are not professionals as far as like, you know, what we say is law. Just like all the ESPN people that you look up to, like Skip Bayless, Jack yeah, Sharp, and, you. and uh, Stephen A. Smith, and all them. You know, we just dudes having fun, talking about our teams, talking about each other's teams, talking about our thoughts on things, and we hope you guys. And girls, enjoy. So, first thing we're going to talk about is a hot topic right now, which is the NFL forcing players, yes, basically forcing players to get vaccinated or they'll have have to forfeit a game if an outbreak happens. How do you feel about that, D? All right, so so early on, since the NFL runs this show, my quarterback's not vaccinated. So, I'm already (laughs) worried as it is already, like, what my season going to turn out. But when I, when I have to look at it on the humane end of it, I mean, yes, you have a choice. You have a choice to be vaccinated or a choice not to be vaccinated. And you should not be, you know, hounded or slandered for whatever your choice is. Mm-hmm. But let's be real. Let's take the humane part out of it. Let's talk about the business side of it. Yep. In the business issue of it, they're telling you, hey, if you want to make this $32 million over four years, you going to get poked with that nigga. Or you're going to sit at home. Or we're going to make it hard for your team because of the chance of an outbreak that your team's probably going to cut you anyway. Mm-hmm. So, yes, in one way it seems like, yo, that sounds harsh. Right. But if you own a store and you have a rule, that employee might not like that rule. But if they wanted to continue to get that check every week, they're going to attain to that rule. So in this aspect right here, I just want them to come to a common ground. At least um, maybe this would be convincing to the, the players to get vaccinated who maybe at least will do more research and see if that's something for them. Or at least the NFL will look at it in another aspect of maybe the penalty, the fine, or suspension, or whatever the guidelines, they can come to something that's not going to be as severe but at least get their point across about the safety of the fans, players, and personnel. I'll enjoy on that because I feel like just making another team forfeit, like that ain't right. Oh, no. Because no. There's, there's no way you're going to force people to get vaccinated. I mean, no matter what your opinion is on it, personally, I feel, you know, it's up to you. You want to get vaccinated, that's fine. But also guys like DeAndre Hopkins that posted and uh, Dak Prescott, and, oh. I mean, not Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, I've talked about people they know personally that have been vaccinated. You know how many cowboys, still man. You know how many yeah. cowboy fans holding their Bible here and there. Uh, exactly. <laughs> you know, and um, and that it's a serious thing. You know, COVID isn't. You know, it's still out here. It's still a big issue. And you know, DeAndre Hopkins flat out said he'll retire before he go get a vaccine before he gets vaccinated. And I feel like you know I understand him to a degree, cause especially if you have loved ones that have took the vaccine. And like I think he said, if, don't quote me on it, because either him or Ezekiel or Elliot, but they were saying that their either their wives' brother took it mm-hmm. and got sick, mm-hmm. you know. And there's people that I know personally who have taken the vaccine and still got COVID. There's people I know that have died from COVID, you know, from after being vaccinated, you know. So in their eyes, they're like, heck, if I ain't got it, why do I have to go get it? And especially because the vaccine that y'all are presenting us with isn't even stopping us from getting it. People still dying. So I understand 100%. Well, okay, now I got to go into my selfishness. So, okay. All right, I look at DeAndre Hopkins as top three wide receiver. 
I want to turn on my TV on Sunday night when Chris Berman and them doing the highlights or whoever they got out there now, and I want to see D-Hop one-handing into the end zone. So I kind of feel like Riley, like Riley Freeman on the bone docks or whatever, right? Right or wrong, if you're going to be the reason why I'm not going to see DeAndre stretching out out here or Ezekiel running somebody over or, I, or my fantasy team loses yeah. because – D Hop done retired and he the best thing I got. I get a little emotional about D Hop. You saw that Hail Mary. I'm just saying, man, that we gotta have a common ground. Mm-hmm. The fans are always gonna be split. It's sports. Sports is always a, a there's gonna be a divide. You're mm-hmm. gonna have some people that's gonna like this, you're gonna have some people that don't like that. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, sports in general usually bring people together. So on my end, sure. the only thing that I'm asking for is for them to have this be another situation. Mm-hmm. Where it brings them together, we keep a quality product that everybody loves to watch, mm-hmm. and I get my football. I mean, that's all I want. Yeah. I want my football. I want, I want my college football. I want my pro football. I mean, you can give me some arena football if I'm bored at one it's o'clock in the morning and there's nothing else to watch. And what is it? The Rock with except that I will watch The Rock, Stone Cold, put the pads on them. I'll watch them too. I'm, I just give me football. That's all I want. That's all that's, I got to say. That's true. And I just really think it's crazy, though. And, I, you know, you got some players that's calling on the NFLPA on this, too, because they're like, how are you going to allow this? Because let's say, like, there's one guy, I forget who it was, but called out DeAndre Hopkins and saying that, you know, I wouldn't want him on my team or a selfish teammate like that. See, that already hurts the problem. And, and yeah, and it's already, and there's some people that's siding with him. Then you got some people coming to his defense saying, you know, um, I believe it was Jalen uh, Ramsey who came to his defense and was saying, like, you know, I wouldn't call my teammate selfish just because he don't believe in getting a vaccine or not. You know, right. it's it's crazy, and I think they, they better come up with something fast because there's no way that my team, let's say Pittsburgh or your team, Carolina, let's say because your quarterback isn't vaccinated right, right, and right. don't want any vaccine, don't believe in the vaccine. Now, let's say y'all was on a tear, y'all went 10 games, you know, whatever, y'all in the number one in y'all division. But now they're saying, the NFL saying, well, because Bridgewater don't want to get vaccinated. Y'all forfeiting those games. Bridgewater, Bridgewater to get oh, my bad. Yeah, my bad. Not Bridgewater no more. Y'all got, um, got Sam, Sam Darnold now. Uh, and now they're saying that Darnold, you know, because he don't want to get vaccinated. Now y'all got to forfeit those same games. Okay, or so. or whatever games he was playing, <laughs> you know, which would most likely be all of them. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, and that's hurt. even would you just given a hypothetical. Yeah, like yeah, like, and that's what people you know have to realize because it's like that's what the NFL is talking about, you know. Especially if an outbreak happens, and I feel if an outbreak happens, you can't put the blame on just one player or let's say maybe five, ten players. Whoever it is going to be that is vaccinated, they the reason the outbreak happened. The well, outbreak could happen just because. Well, what already scares me in this is it's just reported yesterday, mm-hmm. and I can't quote one hundred. I believe this with the. Detroit Lions or the Minnesota Vikings. Um, his last name is Dennison. I know that much. Mm-hmm. No longer has a job on the coaching staff for, because along the lines he refuses to get a vaccine. Okay, mm-hmm. so if you're already seeing that direction that the coaching staff is already being held to that measure, I'm pretty sure any employee that's working in that team's front office mm-hmm. is probably under that measure. Mm-hmm. The writing is on the wall that more than likely, if you're going to want a comfortable time playing in the NFL, you're probably going to have to, in the words of Kwame Brown, <laughs> get on the get along game. But on the side, yeah, you got a couple of that seasoning on it. But on the same note, I also like you still have a right as not just being an American, but as a person in what you feel is right. So if that means that you got to walk around that facility with that mask on all the time mm-hmm. uh, on your bye week, instead of hanging out at the club or going to a function or whatever, mm-hmm. you stay at the house and do your proper quarantine and so forth, mm-hmm. then, yeah, it's going to be a perfect little transition. Mm-hmm. But let's be quite honest. People escaped the bubble last year. Okay. You escaped the bubble. In the bubble. Bro- yeah, <laughs> brought them into the bubble. There's going to be cases. And that's the, N- the NBA bubble from last year, yeah, for, yeah. for my views that I don't know what we're talking about. And, <laughs> and you're going to have cases where people are going to contract it. 
I don't see what was wrong with like what they had last year. You know, they quarantined. You just had to fill in a player in that position. Exactly. Um, yeah, Dumba did kind of get punished that they had to take a dude that was a wide receiver who hadn't played quarterback since corner. But hey, they quarterback room decided to be idiots, so they suffered as a team. Mm-hmm. That stuff there, no problem whatsoever. That's but what I have a problem that. when it gets to the point that a player feels that he has to end his livelihood, the way that he makes money, end his childhood dream before he might has not even made his prime yet because I could cost my teammates, my brothers, this city, mm-hmm. games, championships. And then let's say, for example, that scenario happens. Mm-hmm. Well, you know how we are as fans. Well, not me particularly as fans, but the ones that we don't call fans. We call fanatics. We just give them the whole word. So they already with the, fanatics. We're going to have, have the death family. threats. How dare you get COVID? I'm going to blow taking pictures of your house. Sure, look, we know where you live. You know how they do. Oh, yeah. You know, they're, they're crazy. And so on the simple fact that a dude could have possibly just went to the 7-Eleven and got a sausage dog. I don't recommend that health-wise. We, we do promote healthy living. But on the same note, and the man just happened to go past somebody and get COVID. You mean to tell me that a whole city, a whole franchise is going to be punished for one sausage dog? Mm -hmm. Our society is fluid. Mm -hmm. It is ever-changing, and it is evolving. Our sports and our entertainment should reflect the same. Amen to that. And with that, we're going to move on to our next topic. This one is our man, well, not our man, but everyone's man at one point or another, he either causes you a lot of joy or a lot of tears. Tom Brady. Oh, Brady. Tom Brady is facing possibly a four-game suspension because he played last year with a torn MCL but didn't even tell nobody. Didn't tell the NFL like that. He told a select few people and the word got out. Snitches get stitches. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so now they're saying because he should have been on the injured reserve list or the, uh, what's that, the P? The pup know, list. The pup list, the pup list. Um Players are able to perform. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm good. That <laughs> now they felt like they had an unfair advantage, which I mean, don't get me wrong, they did because if there was no Tom Brady, there wouldn't be no to the Bay Buccaneers being Super Bowl champion. But then again, who knows? Maybe they could. They team is stacked, so I don't know. But how do you feel about this whole Tom Brady possibly getting, getting four game suspension because he held his medical from the NFL? Okay, so we're saying that Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers mm-hmm. had a disadvantage mm-hmm. because he was playing on one leg. A 44-year-old man playing on one leg. One <laughs> leg. <laughs> okay. While everybody else was playing on two legs. Mahomes had two <laughs> legs. The Kansas City Chiefs defense had two legs. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then his receivers, were, everybody had two legs but Tom. Mm-hmm. But you said that the disadvantage mm-hmm. came to the Kansas City Chiefs? See, this is one of them things that, like, I guess you got to feel the news cycle. Mm-hmm. There's a little time, you know, the finals just ended. We don't have nothing else to talk about real quick. The Olympics ain't really jumped off yet. So we're going so we to talk about Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady. Some people think the GOAT. I just say, hey, dope quarterback. All right? Four games, we didn't deflate no balls. Not this time. Nobody was videotaping, you know, blah, blah, blah. You didn't see, he won't throwing trophies off the boat, reckless, you know, throwing Super Bowl trophies. He didn't do none of that. The man went out there with one leg, one, one. I know what the disadvantage was. What's that? He still had two arms. Yeah. <laughs> he had two arms. Yeah. But, but, uh, but on a serious note, though, okay, he was at more risk. Of hurting his own team and his career if he would have got hurt worse than what he already was. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is one of those scenarios where it was kind of like, okay, enter at your own risk. Mm -hmm. You get what you get. You know, if you shake the tree, whatever falls out the tree, that's what you're going to get. And in this case, he shook a tree that money fell out of. Mm -hmm. It was gone. And it was cool. But as far as a four game suspension, okay, he just don't play the preseason. That's yeah. how I feel about it. Because I mean, really, what? So what are we gonna do? Make his legacy even better? Okay, I'm not no Tom Brady fan, 
But okay, let's say Tom Brady missed four games. Mm-hmm. I'm not quite familiar with the schedule right now. I think maybe in that four games they do. I think they might have to play the Panthers in that four games. If that's the case, suspend them. Suspend them right now. I'm with you. But on another note, Tampa Bay go 0-4. And And this is just how Tom Brady's life has been. I don't know if he's got rabbit foot, a little leprechaun. If his faith in Jesus is just that great, I don't know. But Tom Brady is the type of dude that could get suspended for a game. It's Tampa Bay be 0-4. And, and they go on a 14-13 game winning streak to the NFC Championship game. Yeah. And then they'll say the reason why they lost the NFC Championship game was because they were so spent and so tired from winning all them games to probably win the division by a game. Well, Tom Brady's legacy, now we're going to have a movie about how Tom was on one leg again and, and went on a 13-game winning streak. Yeah, I, I just can't the, make this drunk up. Right? The whole thing is to me is crazy. If anything, Tom Brady should probably get an uh, extra round of applause and respect for playing with a torn MCL the entire, the entire season. Now, that's not just like, you know, the postseason. The entire season, they say. He, you, can't, um, you can't even do that on that. No. No way. And the fact that he's done that and took his team to the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl, still won Super Bowl MVP and everything, I mean, that's 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 incredible. To me, that really just solidified the GOAT status of him. But I do understand from a business point of the NFL, because I'm pretty sure they wanted him to do the whole T.O. route. Do you remember when T.O. played with the broken ankle? And they wanted him to sign that waiver because of something what happened. That would be on T.O. because he signed away. If they, something would happen with Brady, something, it'll be on him instead of the NFL. So all this is just money. What it boils always, down to, always. and I was talking to my boy uh, Jordan, you know, shout out to you, Jordan, if you see this, about, um, <clears throat> you know, Tom Brady. He's a big Tom Brady fanatic, or fan fanatic. <laughs> and uh, he's like, yeah, man, yeah, if anything, man, this awesome. this should definitely give, you know, a, a notch, a medal to Brady for playing with that. And I, I 100% agree. I think it's, the whole thing is pretty dumb. They should just move on with he it. He got the cover of Madden with Mahomes. That's what he gets. I mean, look, now, on his that Mad- His Madden curse is a four-game suspension. Because really, let's be, <laughs> let's be quite honest. Now, on the same note, as we praising this dude mm-hmm. for one leg, like, Brett Favre was one of the walking dead. You know what I mean? And was still out there slinging touchdown passes. Steve Young with concussions. Mm-hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. They didn't have the same success rate. And this is what makes Brady great. Yeah. But... Just because I don't love Brady like everybody else do. I'm not I'm gonna give him his flowers, but I'm still gonna have to throw a little something on it. Brady, you might be the greatest quarterback of all time, but I'd be daggum if I call you the GOAT. So who's your GOAT then? The right. quarterback. The GOAT of quarterback. Who hmm. named Brady? If it's not Brady, who would it be? He said Peyton Manning. I always love Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning and that's a <laughs> that's, a, that's a great guy. Peyton Manning entertains me more off the field there. He probably oh, even yeah. did. Shout out to Peyton Manning if you on the field. Come across this. I guess <laughs> I guess you know what? I'm gonna have to eat pie because eat humble pie because at the end of the day, in my heart of hearts, I would wanna say somebody like like Montana. Montana. Yeah, was, was, was but Brady place. keeps passing them rings, just getting rings. He just picks them up like you can order them off Amazon there. Like, people don't even remember Joe in him. So, okay, Tom Brady is the greatest of all time. But like I said, out of my own stubbornness, I, it's, it's I would not stuff. call him the GOAT. You said people don't even remember Joe. <laughs> That's they messed don't, up. They don't. But it's it's about it's three years ago, everybody used to be like this. Joe Montana was the greatest quarterback ever lived. Mm-hmm. Now Brady done snatched another ring. Now, you know, all you see is him in the Skechers commercial. And they don't even know that he's a Super Bowl champion unless they put that little thing, Joe Montana, or so-and-so Super Bowl champion. It's sad, but it's it's true because it, it, I mean one stat that was crazy. What I remember watching during the Super Bowl that they brought up in the beginning was that when Tom Brady won his first Super Bowl, Patrick Mahomes was in kindergarten. Yeah, yeah. See, see. That, <laughs> you know, so this dude been winning, <laughs> been winning a Super Bowl since this other dude who's on the other team has been in like kindergarten. That's crazy. Like Brady has been that that long, that right, longevity. He wins everything. Yeah, everything. 
Didn't he win that little golf tournament with them little PGA guys or something? He was, at least he was in it. I mean, <laughs> so look at Aaron Rodgers. Poor Aaron, I, you know, I hate to get off the subject for a minute, right? <laughs> but we got to talk about Aaron Rodgers. Like, ain't nothing to talk about. if Tom Brady, <laughs> if Tom Brady can just be like, you know what? I want out. I want out. Tom got to pick his vacation and retirement spot in great old Tampa Bay. All he had to do was win a ring. Yeah. Let Aaron free. Let Aaron go. You know, you heard the joke. If they don't want you, just let them go. Just let them be. If they don't love you, then you just got to let them go. Let them go. I just posted on my Facebook how sad it is right now to be a Green Bay fan for all you Packers fans. Oh. I feel for y'all. I'm yeah. actually going to check y'all. I'm going to call y'all to make sure y'all okay because y'all – Possibly losing Rodgers, Ooh. and if he can't get out, he's going to sit out, I feel, yeah. at this point. Yeah, Jeopardy's always on the uh, Devontae Adams is on his Ooh. way out, too. He's Ooh. trying to go to the Chargers. Ooh, not Devontae. Yeah, you oh, see that? No, not Tay Bay. Yeah, Tay Bay about to be gone. We came now, and we're uh, tweeting at each other. How oh, he yeah. wanted to come home. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Let's we'll see if Chargers. Leave, he need to go to a contender. He got to go to a contender. No well, they, 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 were, they were talking about they felt if he would come to the Chargers, that they both would get like 300 yards a game. I said, well, they're not playing Madden. (laughs) Exactly. But they are great, though. So, I mean, I wouldn't say 300 yards a game, but I could see definitely a couple games where they could reach that. I really think they could some slack ass team like maybe, you know, who's Jacksonville? No, we stop. Uh, We stop. Shout out to yeah, Jacksonville. Jacksonville. (laughs) It used used to be Cleveland, but now they they turned around. Still Cleveland. True that. Still Cleveland. Now, let's move on to our next uh, subject. We're going to talk about the NBA Finals. Yes. What amazing finals. One of the best finals, I could probably say, in the last eight years at least. Ten. 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 Because it was brand new. There was no LeBron. There was no KD. There was no Steph. There was no – like, everybody that was in there, was this their first time going, first time winning. And, I mean, personally, I'm happy for Giannis. He's one of the best players that's out right now. I feel when LeBron's time is to pass the torch of who's the best player that ESPN going to follow like they did Jordan and gave it to LeBron, it's got it's either going to be Giannis, maybe Davis, Anthony Davis, but I think it will probably be Giannis. So I'm happy for him. But I was kind of sad, though, because I felt bad for Chris Paul. I was like, man, this has to be his year. This is his year. He's going to get that ring. Man. And it didn't happen. So, so, what's your thoughts on the finals in that the uh, Milwaukee Bucks took it in six? Oh, I have so many emotions. I have so many emotions when it comes down to this NBA finals. Because for one, just like like my man here said, it was fresh, very fresh. I mean, it was really actually more refreshing that we had small market teams. You know, you had the Bucks hadn't been in like fifty years. Uh, I think it said seventy or three. Yeah, something of that nature. Won. Kareem won't even Kareem then. He was Lou Al Sunder. So that should, say, <laughs> that should say something, you know. That should say something to how long it had been. Oh, man. So then we get to, you know, Phoenix. You know, they hadn't been since Barkley, you know, was there. And, you know, I think Steve Kerr shot them out the building that night. So – we had one, and we call them kind of small market, but let's be quite honest. Title Town, USA, even though a small market by region, it's not Title Town for nothing. Mm-hmm. But there was three things, three things that I took from this finals that made it like the best finals in 10 years. And I guess you would say three things I took from the playoffs in general. Okay. There's a lot of people that want to say that there's like an asterisk on this championship because of all these injuries and all that. Every year there's injuries that you don't play 72 games or 82 games, however the season is set up at the time, post or pre-pandemic. And not be banged up, not have have some wounds that need to be licked. You know, there's, it's a grind. That's why they call it a grind, okay? 82, oh, yeah. 72 games. Then you're talking playoffs, you're talking back-to-backs and so forth. Yeah, it, it takes a lot. And then you got to think, but you still got to train in the offseason because there's new kids coming. Poor LeBron, he hasn't really had a – this is like his first summer where he just had it. But basically what I'm getting at is, is that, like, for example, Chris Middleton and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Shout out to them. Eight years together. Grinded. Chris Middleton, one of the first G League players to be on an active roster in the NBA. Mm-hmm. 
And they stuck to the process. They just kept adding pieces, adding pieces, adding pieces. And then they got their golden nugget, Drew Holiday. Mm -hmm. His length at the end of the day and his intensity on D really helped slow Booker down at times that it was needed. Devin Booker is Devin Booker. He's going to get buckets. But Drew Holiday, the defense and the length that he put on trying to hound that man really made Booker's field goal percentage go down towards the end. Also, Chris Paul could not get his game with that length. Let's be quite honest. He's got to be 5'9 or 5'10 without shoes on. And he's he's getting up there in age. So when you add a length to him, you can take that game away. He was already banged up. The second thing that I take into this playoffs that just really caught my eye. It just it was just interesting to me. Every round. Regardless of how you felt about any team, I don't care if it was Atlanta versus Milwaukee, uh, the Clippers versus Phoenix, they were entertaining games. Very entertaining. Extremely. If somebody went up 2 1, 3 1, you didn't just sit there and go, like, okay, the next game is it. They kept playing. The third thing that I took from this finals that made it so entertaining to me was this finals was like a, like a Marvel movie to me. Because of the emotions up and down and how certain things came out. Mm -hmm. Phoenix jumped out there early. Bang, bang, we're going to get these boys. We're going to run them out of here. Giannis is hurt with this crazy hyperextended knee. Only had like four days off. Mm -hmm. We're going to attack. Okay, Giannis and them, they ate it. Mm -hmm. They ate it kind of like, you know, your hero in the movie. Got to sit back. We got to reassess how we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. And they came out and gave everything they had. And then at the moment, the villain, Aiton, Aiton at the time, Devin Booker throwing the alley-oop up. Mm -hmm. DeAndre Aiton leaping for the alley, and here's Giannis like, no, no, no. Okay. Swats that thing I, away. I think DeAndre Aiton got a bright future. He has a great future. But at that moment, Giannis took that man's heart. And when he took that man's heart, he took that serious. Because after that, Giannis drove to the goal. Every chance he got... Aiton did not know what to do with that man. In that last game, in the early part of the game, the lights was already too big for Aiton. He was bobbling the ball. Aiton, seven feet tall. He goes to make a hook shot. Here's Giannis swatting it back to him. I believe psychologically that did something to him because the average cat was not doing that to him in this playoffs. No. The average cat that was matching up with him wasn't seven feet either. No. He was the big man. Roll to the goal. I'm going to get my buckets. And Giannis said no. With a hyper extended knee. People, y'all, this is not a sprain. He would have wished it was a sprain. If y'all, I wish I had the footage to show how that, it, who, you kind of feel it I when think you it think about it. What they say it yeah, but the, this is what makes this even greater. Giannis, this is like a, Oh my God! I hate I'm missing his name right now for the Knicks. <laughs> he was for the Knicks and he he had got hurt. He left and he came back. I can't think of his name. It was back in the '70s when they. Oh my, oh my gosh! gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh! But either way, it, it gives you that feel. It gave you that feel like Giannis was just like, you know what? They can't do this without me. Mm -hmm. And if I know what I can do, and what he knew he couldn't do was shoot a three. And he finally did what I had been yelling at the TV all playoffs. He stopped shooting threes. As soon as he stopped shooting threes, the offense flowed. Because when Giannis, no disrespect to the Greek freak, and I put a lot, a lot of emphasis on freak, all due respect to him, when Giannis shoots a three, it is the equivalent of a turnover. It is the equivalent of a turnover. So you're calling him Ben Simmons out here. No, I'm not calling him Ben because he will take the shot. Just like in the Dayton game. They say you can't hit unless you take the shot. Well, there's some things that's just out of your league. And you don't, I'm not going to walk up to Halle Berry and shoot my shot. You might be like this. Why not? I'm just going to be like this. That's Halle, man. That's Halle. I got to hold on a different kind of pedestal. That's my mental block. But what I'm saying is, is Giannis... From the bottom of my heart, for true basketball fans, what you did, and you know what? I'm not just going to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank Chris Middleton. 
I want to thank Drew Holiday, Booten Hoser, Robin Lopez on the other flip of it. Chris Paul and that dag up, and he knows it. I've been screaming Devin Booker for the last three years, people. I was wondering, why was he snubbed off All-Star teams? Why is he an alternate on the West All-Star team? Mm -hmm. He was an alternate this year. Mm -hmm. No disrespect to Chris Paul. Chris Paul won an alternate. He was in. Mm -hmm. What world does that go in? Popularity contest. Oh, Forget the popularity contest. Oh, the Phoenix Suns let down Devin Booker. And anybody who thinks different, you obviously did not watch that series. That man left everything he had. Uh, two 40-point games. I think he had a 30-piece in there. I know there was. he had two off-shooting nights. Hey, man, you're going to have them. But he got them there. All I want to say at the end of the day is thank you, NBA. Thank you, Phoenix Suns. Thank you, Milwaukee Bucks. And Mr. Greek Freak. Thank you again because we was able to show people that you can win a championship and your name is not LeBron James or Kevin Durant or, I mean, Steph. And then don't get me wrong. There's still the reasons I love watching this game. But to have a finals where you had Giannis, two-time MVP, that just moved him up just a little bit more. Oh, yeah. It's Think about time. it. James Harden ain't going to ring. But you know what? James Harden ain't gonna block nobody's shot either. He don't play no defense. He don't. He don't play no defense. No. Shout out to James Harden though. James Harden, hey, don't block. Don't get hey, blocked before I get you, started. Though. James Harden, you, you've improved a little on defense. Hey, your beard is nice. All right. So now with that we're gonna move on to our next topic. We're gonna talk about our teams, which is back to the NFL. We got the Pittsburgh Steelers. Me representing that always. You already know. I don't even got my key thing. I'm not in the car. But I always got some type of steel gear on me. And then I got my boy over here, Derek, who's a big old fan. Of we keep pounding, baby. We keep pounding. Those Carolina Panthers, baby. Those Panthers, baby. Ah, yeah, that's how we do it, baby. Shout out to the Panthers. Yeah. So, so 2020 was a crazy year with the pandemic and everything oh, happening. Crazy indeed, indeed. So it's almost hard to judge that year like a regular year. But we're going to do our best we can. Oh, yeah, so most definitely, most definitely. What do you feel went wrong for the Carolina Panthers in 2020? Okay. All right. So, you know how we go with, you know, behind the scenes, we talk a lot of sports. Yeah. And a lot of times just the, the fan in me, you know, I talk the dream scenarios with my team or I'm shooting my team bail. You know, I'm a fan. So I'm always having an excuse for my team, even though this is another excuses type league. Yeah. But really – the protocols didn't really hurt us last year. We were pretty good when it came down to the protocols. We really didn't lose players. Mm -hmm. Or if they were, they probably weren't even getting really any playing time. So it was a decent dynamic on that end. I think, what was it McCaffrey's own that got hurt, right? Yeah, see, that's where I was getting to. Yeah. The injuries in general. The pandemic affected us mm -hmm. because, one, we needed training camp. We needed OTA. And that's not to say that we're different from any other team. Every team needed them. But we needed the OTAs. We needed the training camp. We needed at least two preseason games. One, Teddy was a quarterback from a whole nother team. There was no chemistry build. You know, everybody didn't have the guts like Tom Brady to take his guys to the park, even when they don't supposed to be out there and throw the ball or whatever. But I diverse. I ain't, I ain't, I'm going to regret it because I'm not a snitch. Brady Shade already. <laughs> hey, he's in my division. We were just praising them 10 minutes ago. <laughs> hey, that's just, hey, it just seemed like that's how this news cycle works. One second they love you, the next second they hate you. But, but to look at it, and then also early on, Christian got hurt early. I kind of felt like it was going to be like a Detroit Lions type of year. Antoine Jones, don't be mad at me for saying that, all right? But basically what I'm saying is is that <laughs> when McCaffrey <laughs> when McCaffrey went down, when McCaffrey went down, it was like, you know, we yelling like, yo, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. That was probably about three, four days I was in my room in the fetal position, you know, listening to Everybody Hurts. And they did the exact opposite of what I thought they would do. What's that? They fought. <laughs> they really fought. Now, Teddy had some knee injuries. Mm -hmm. uh, mind you, he has not been a full-time quarterback, really. Since Minnesota. Yes. So, there was a fatigue issue that came into there. 
And not to mention, we had a very young defense who was just learning, but talented, but trying to figure this thing out. And we lost five to six games by six points or less without Christian McCaffrey. So, in my eyes, I felt like it was a success because, one, we fought. We battled through injury. Those young, talented guys got a lot of experience. Lost to the Chiefs by two. I felt like that was a victory. Usually to me, I'm not a fan of moral victories, but when I looked at the whole landscape of it, I really felt like we left with a lot of high, like high notes that we could build on. And when I get to the point of telling you how they're going to do this year, I think you're going to want to agree to agree with me that the Carolina Panthers is a team you're going to want to watch for this season. All right. What's up? So, question back on to me. What I think went wrong with my team last year uh, as Pittsburgh Steelers. I think really what happened, we just burned the candle at both ends way too fast. We, And on top of that, and I'll be the first to admit everybody know me, I am a football fan, but I'm also a dollar Steelers fan. But I'm a football fan 100%, and I could admit when, you know, things aren't right with my team or things ain't wrong or whatever. But I felt that once we got on that winning streak, when we was winning them 10 games, it stopped becoming about football and winning games. We was getting more headlines on the street and TikToks with me, uh, Juju, Juju, and all the other players in the locker rooms and stuff. And I felt like we became more superstars than actually playing and becoming football players. And when we got smacked by the Washington oh, I said, the, the football team. team. The football team. <laughs> I think it really checked us to realize, oh, wait, we – you know, we're, we're not as good as we think we is. And then on top of that, no disrespect to any team that we've beaten in those 10 games. But we really didn't run into a challenge in those 10 games, except for Baltimore, with that first one that we won. But that was it. Okay. I have and then when we got the second one, Baltimore beat us. Okay, this is my question. Yeah. When has the Pittsburgh Steelers not played like they don't believe their own hype? I mean, at the end of the day, the Pittsburgh Steelers last it's year, to me, time. to me, I felt like what they did last year uh, is synonymous to what the Pittsburgh Steelers do in general. Yes, the Pittsburgh Steelers have those pockets mm-hmm. where the talent is just that great, the chemistry is just that great, and that vibe leads them to a Super Bowl. Never knock them for that. But those years, when they're not in that pocket, there's a lot of mediocrity. Mind you, there will be injuries. I'm not going to sit there and say that lot, Pittsburgh lot don't have injuries. Pittsburgh tend to have the most misfortune at the most unfortunate time. That's, that's I will that, say that. That, oh. that hindered us, too, was, oh. I was like, the injury to our defense. When we right. lost Bush, oh. then we lost Bud. And he, they, they're studs. They're yeah, studs. And those, are, those studs. We lost yeah. Bud to, in the offseason, too. So oh, yeah, that hurt. And uh, Tennessee. Ooh, but, Tennessee. We'll get back to we'll get back to them on cap uh, cap or no cap. Uh, uh, cap, but, uh, no cap. <laughs> I feel between us becoming our players becoming superstars and TikTok famous and injuries and as much as I love this dude, I'm thankful for everything he's done for my team. Ben, as much as I love him and defend him forever, because there's really no better option than having Ben on our team than what we got right now. You know, Hackins he he got some upside. I hope he proves me right. Because I'm kind of, I'm kind of scared. He lost him too. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah his wife. Yeah. He really want the quarterback that his old lady beat up. <laughs> well, oh, we're not, well, that's not no our topic. Offense. Though. That's not I our mean, topic. but he's also from Ohio. You know how the Ohio quarterbacks do in the league. No offense. No offense to Ohio. Which is, y'all have a bad track record when it comes to having quarterbacks to go to the pros. Hey, but there's some real genius in Ohio. Some really thuggy thugs in Ohio. Oh, yeah. No and I ain't respect. built like that. So, <laughs> I have nothing to say about y'all quarterback. No y'all disrespect. quarterbacks are Terrell Pryor. Yeah. He should have been a legend. Yeah. I can't say it with straight he still, I can't say Well, he still, he still holds a record for the longest run in uh, uh, quarterback history. Your Raiders. quarterbacks are some of the best running quarterbacks I have seen. Some of the best athletes ever. You best athletes best that I've seen because I was really about to lie. <laughs> I think that y'all produce great defensive players, but I'm, I'm going to swing back to where we was at, though. But Pittsburgh, I was just going to speak on that. Yeah. I have a question. Go ahead. 
Is Mason Rudolph still a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers? Well, I believe, yeah. I believe he's going to be uh, second string, possibly third, because we, we got uh, Dobbs to that. Okay, my question is this. Yeah. You have Dwayne Haskins? Yeah. You have Dobbs? Yep. Why do y'all have Rubo? Well, <laughs> I, I, I can't, you know, I can't even defend ben. him. Huh? And we didn't say Ben because, you know, Ben's the obvious. He's the star. Yeah. But I'm saying you have – you have between Haskins and Dobbs. So, if let's say Ben had to be out a game or two, God forbid, but if he had to be out a game or two, I feel like between Haskins and Dobbs, you can get the job done if you have a running game and, you know, the defense is playing their game. Which we will. Which, we which will. they will. He's come to the improvements. But my <laughs> question is this. Why is Mason Rudolph on your roster? To me, I feel like that's a roster space. They could either go to some special team work, a defensive player, another lineman. Because, I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, Mason Rudolph put a black eye on the Steelers. I'm not going to get into that subject because, you know, that's a whole – that's just like a whole nother yeah, episode yeah, yeah, you could have of yeah, something. Yeah. But then to not be able to produce in the moments that you had, he had the opportunity to make an audition tape, almost just like the Patriots that year Brady was down and – there was Jacoby Brissett and Hoyer and all oh, yeah. them. And they Jimmy were able. And Matt Castle. And Matt oh, Castle. Yeah. And even Jimmy G. Mm-hmm. All of them had audition time. What did that audition time lead to? It's Teams $10. backing up the brink truck and just throwing money at them. Mm-hmm. I have not even seen anybody come with their wallet and throw it at Mason Rudolph. Forget the Brinks truck. Obviously. Nobody's even taking change and throwing it at Mason Rudolph. Andrew Jones is getting more offers than freaking Mason Rudolph would. Mason Rudolph <laughs> to was me. Old quarterback before. Now, don't get me wrong. My feelings with Mason Rudolph go deeper than sports, but I try to stay objective. You a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Mm-hmm. Mason Rudolph is a Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm-hmm. Does Mason Rudolph... Not talking about his actions, talking about his ability and what he has shown on the field. Should Mason Rudolph be a member of any team in the NFL? Any team. And that's even talking any with team. the Houston Texans. Do the damn team. He shouldn't be a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I think he, he may get cut when it's time for all that. I, I mean, I hate the, I don't want to put that in the universe. I don't want to see them lose their job, but hey. There's only so many roster spots available. Oh, yeah. But I, there's guys I think that's worse than Mason Rudolph that he actually still got back up, even third string roles. So there's probably a space for him. And if not, the CFL is always looking for people. <laughs> now, no, let's, that, that was great. Let's, that, let's, that let's talk great. about the improvements now because 2021 is a new season. Let's bring it back to the Carolina Panthers. What are the improvements that your team has made, and how far do you think they're going to go? This whole offseason, I have been on a high, like a rocket ship has just launched me into the atmosphere because of what it looks like for the Carolina Panthers. Now, mind you, it's been an emotional roller coaster for me in this process, but when I step back now and look at what we're going to be bringing into training camp mm-hmm. and what the possibilities are for us, oh, I'm highly excited. First of all, we're talking Christian McCaffrey, who will be healthy and who has put on about 10 more pounds of muscle to go on with that agility, ability, and speed and hands. I hope it don't slow him down. I don't think it's going to slow him down. Christian McCaffrey stays pretty balanced in his, his attack, yeah. so I feel good on that end. The other thing I'm looking at is drafting J.C. Horn, people. Mm-hmm. We already have a great corner in Dante Jackson. We also picked up A.J. Boye. Okay, who is who's going to be probably the nickel guy. All right. So with that being said, you're going to have J.C. Horn, who is also the son of Joe Horn. That was wide receiver for the Saints. Famous for the cell phone from the cushion after making the touchdown. Oh, yes. That's his son. Who is from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Joe Horn is originally from Fayetteville, North Carolina. But J.C. Horn is a very physical, aggressive Great hands, instinctual. Some people even compare him to a poor man's Jalen Ramsey. I'm <laughs> going to take it a step further. I think he's the upgrade That's to Jalen Ramsey. People I give him the that. upgrade. Yes, people, saying <laughs> That's that. That's people saying he's the poor man's Jalen Ramsey. They all messed up. Anybody but yeah, they messed up. That. That's, That's messed up. up. But Pete, <laughs> look at him. 
two to three years from now, they're going to be saying Jalen who and saying J.C. Hey, did you heard it here first. Now, Jeremy Chin in that secondary, nephew, Steve Adwater, Denver Broncos, who ended the career of Christian Koye. If you don't know who Christian Koye is, Google Christian Okoye, but you're going to see Nigerian Nightmare, mm. big black running back. Yeah. Steve Atwater got a hold of him. It was over with. Jeremy Chin holds the same spirit of his uncle Steve Atwater. He gives me Sean Taylor vibes. Mm. He gives me Sean Those Taylor vibes. Right yeah, there, and man. I love me Sean Taylor. Rest in peace to the legend Sean Taylor. Jeremy Chin gives me Sean Taylor vibes. Now, also in that breath, you're looking at a linebacker core that has Hassan Reddick, Denzel Perryman at middle linebacker, and Shaq Thompson on the other linebacker. That is a great A, and on any given year, Pro Bowl linebacking core. All right? And then, ooh, a defensive line that's got Derrick Brown. Awesome first round defensive tackle that we picked up last year. And we got Spider Man Brian Burns on the other end. People, I'm excited and I haven't even got to you on my offense yet. This defense right here with the team they had last year, young pandemic injuries, finished 15 in defense. And with these upgrades and pray for health. We could be a top 10 to top 5 defense, and remember defense wins championships, just ask Patrick Mahomes. And now, let's get to the part that gets a little shaky, and this is where my roller coaster came. I had a story to tell. So, Teddy Bridgewater sent to the, the Denver Broncos. I wanted Teddy to leave. But then in the same breath, I felt like we maybe should have gave him another chance. But for the most part, for what we was paying him, he had to go. So one day, I'm at work. Notification pops up on my phone. Samuel Donald was now my quarterback. Mm -hmm. The same dude. That I've really not had anything great to say about even at USC. Mm -hmm. Felt like he was an interception machine. But I felt like great. most great quarterbacks in the NFL for some reason are, in the, are interception machines when they're young. So I didn't take, I didn't take, I didn't take nothing from him. But now he's my quarterback. So in a matter of like three years, I went, well, four years, I went from Superman mm -hmm. to Kyle Allen. To Taylor Heineke, to who, who else we had? Oh, Teddy Bridgewater, Will Greer, uh, PJ Walker. We beat the Lions. Shout that. out to Antoine Vincent Jones. We beat the Lions with PJ Walker. Yeah. Um, John Allen too. He, he was yeah, Cal there. Allen. Yeah, he was, he, was he couldn't hold on to a football game. to save his life, <laughs> but we got a win with. Him. All right, and now we're going oh. into we're going to the mode of Sam Donald. I have nothing but optimistic vibes. One, because one, he's got a little good footwork. He can sling it. He's been on a trash organization. If you are a Jets fan, I am not going to apologize to you for your franchise being trash. Okay? Because first off, you should demand more. Y'all should boycott games. Y'all should stop buying jerseys for the product. They couldn't even get the number one pick right. All you had to do was lose. If you are a Jets fan, that is your fault. We will not console you. I don't care. All right? Jets, you just like to lose. You are a glutton for abuse. Even eventually the Mets win sometime. Okay? Well, the but, Jets, they, but at least they do got a Super Bowl. There's some teams that still never win. They it. won that Super Bowl before the Super Bowl was important. <laughs> but back to my Carolina Panthers, okay? <laughs> the reason why I have so much hope and Sam Darn. is one, we have the mad cheat code himself, who I like to call Mr. White Chocolate Christian McCaffrey. You can hand it to him. He can catch it out the backfield. He can line up in the slot. He makes it very hard for your defense. But then we got that Florida boy. I love his accent. His dreads are sitting everywhere. He's like, I feel like he give that team just, just some razzle dazzle. It's that, that Robbie Anderson. Right. A deep threat. Oh, don't let him catch it on the slant and you ain't right on. 
He came from your favorite Jets. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Doing his yeah, yeah. Him and Sam have been the best thing to happen to the Jets. Let, let's be honest, okay? So, now we're going to go on with that. We're going to go on with that. We got DJ Moore. DJ Moore. Even though I have mixed emotions about DJ because I expected a little bit more. I've heard that he's been working with wide receiver guy, Mr. Steve Smith. And I feel like you're going to see some changes in DJ Moore. He's taking a fresh start, changing the jersey number, going back to his college number, just, wearing two. I feel like he just needs to get more physical. And I hope the, the working out with Steve Smith is going to Oh, yeah. You, you don't have no choice but to be physical working mm-hmm. with Steve Smith. And the one other thing that I, we re-extended, Taylor Moten. You always want to keep your line in. And some kind of standing. We drafted Christensen out of BYU. I've heard nothing but great things. But we also have, and I don't want to mess his name up, Andre Smith, 300 and some pound guard out of Alabama who never gave up a sack. We got him undrafted people. He is built like a tractor trailer, Dag Nabbit. And if they can develop him, we are going to be all right. We're going to be great. We're going to be fine. It's like in the great words of Jada Kiss and the locks, you know, with their verses about to come out. we going to make it. What do you think going to win? The verses? Yeah. Let's get off topic. Okay, to get off topic for a second, if we're <laughs> going to go there, I'm going to have to say that the talent will be the locks. I think the popularity will be Dipset. And then I feel like you're just going to have a split pool like you already have leading into it about who won. It's going to be like Gucci and Jeezy. Some people thought Gucci won. Some people thought Jeezy won. At the end of the day, as long as it's safe, just reminiscing on dope music, I'm there for it. Now, back to my Carolina Panthers. Where am I, like, dream? Where am I dream saying they're going to be at this year? Yeah. Where do you think? In my dream scenario. Well, well, actually, in let's, my dream? Let's, let's save that for uh, okay. cap and uh, no cap. Okay. The bold prediction. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. So, that's, so let's, let's talk back about to, the, to the Steelers. <laughs> so, now, as far as improvement, I'm glad that we got Harris running back out of Alabama. So, oh, that's we, Yeah. And I've seen videos of him and Bush Ooh. going at it. Ooh. Woo. I mean, we we got we got them. I feel like we if a Steelers fans watching this, all my peeps around the globe. I feel like we got our running back. It's James been a Conner. long time. <laughs> no disrespect, to James Conner. I love him. Love his story. You know, battling cancer, coming back, and you know, making it to the NFL and stuff. He was great for us. He in Arizona, so you know, good luck to you out there. But uh, they have a track record of taking those running backs and never working out, so good luck with that. <laughs> so Rashawn Mendenhall said hi. Sounds like, <laughs> shame. Sounds like a little shit. Uh, I'm just saying, that's, it's, it's the facts. So I think Harris is a, big, a great pickup. We still got Eric Ebron, which I think was Tall awesome. Hill. Yeah, Superman. I felt like you know he really showed out for us, and I think he's going to continue to show out for us next year. Or this year, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, what I'm scared of, though, as a Steelers fan, is the line issue. I love continue to go back to improvements. The defensive side, we got Melvin Ingram, him and T.J. Watt. I mean, we already got Cameron Hayward still. Stephon too is a stud as well. I feel like the pressure is gonna be there. We got Mika Fitzpatrick. We also uh, still got Joe Hayden. He's not as fast as he was, but he's still an All-Pro corner. Probably not today's standard, but he's still All-Pro. You know, from his track record. So I think he's gonna be doing his thing. But as far as offensively, that's what I'm worried about because we have basically a whole a whole new line. We lost David uh, DeCastrio yeah, yeah, because yeah. we just couldn't afford to pay him, which was crazy to me. But that's Pittsburgh. Yeah. So he's out there in free agency, and I feel like he's gonna go somewhere in our rival just to stick it up us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just stick Baltimore, it. Up. Yeah. Probably. And that's what throwing a wave. Yeah, throwing a wave with in Baltimore. Yeah. We lost him. Pouncey retired. Yeah. So I mean. We got, uh, no offense to Ben Roethlisberger. The injury is kind of into pounds, though. Oh, yeah. After he tore his ACL years back, he ain't been the same. Yeah. But I feel like having losing our line, we did get some replacements, but it, it normally takes about a good four or five games before a brand new line really started gelling together and really functioning. And I think that's what's going to hurt us a little bit. So I think we're going to probably drop our first 
you know, two games, win two before they really start gelling together or maybe drop three, win two, or vice versa. So that's that's just me being real. Um, wide receiver-wise, I feel like we're, we're all right. I mean, good there. Like, yeah, like, got, I feel – Y'all go to Walmart and pick up the same <laughs> and then they go yeah, to the Pro Bowl. I don't understand how that works. <laughs> I, um, I think a lot of that credit goes to our, our coaching staff and also Ben. You know, Ben gives these guys chances. He really do. He believes in a lot of guys even when he shouldn't. No, don't get me wrong. Like, people said the same thing about getting Antonio Brown. Look how he turned out. Antonio Brown wasn't highly recruited. He was a six-round draft pick. Ben was giving him chances. They were deep when people were scratching their head. Wall is open. What about Sanders? What are you doing? And he turned out to be all right. So, I mean, look, we got Claypool. Claypool. I like Claypool. He has a pretty good. Like, like Claypool got swag, man. Yeah, I, like, I, I, like I like Claypool, bro. You know, Juju, if he keeps his head in the game, he, he could still continue to like dancing so much. Oh, uh, he's young. Okay. Yeah, he, 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 he's a little younger than me. Like yeah, they like to dance. I like to dance. I can't dance, so yeah, it's the young. It's a young yeah, They just step in the name a little bit. Um, Johnson, I like Johnson. I feel he's all right, too. Um, damn, I'm escaping me now. Was another uh, receiver I was about to talk about. What's that dude? What's that dude? What's that dude? What's that dude? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I got you. Oh, oh, there's somebody y'all got. I know he's kind of big. Like yeah, he's big a big dude. guy. He's gonna be good if they throw him the ball. You heard yeah. it here first, people. And no name Jenkins. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. And I, and and we will because Ben loves to take chances with the younger guys. He always has until they get really good and then want to leave for money and stuff. Yeah, he ain't taking no pay cut. Yeah, no. <laughs> he, no pay he, he took some and, and he took one massive pay cut back in 2014, I think. And we had all these promises. We were going to use that money for, to get this person and this person. We ain't getting nobody. All we did was draft and good play. Which is, don't get me wrong. The other year we drafted, I think, uh, it was yeah, around the time I took that pay cut, we drafted Shazier. Okay. But, I mean, that's a draft. It ain't really, we ain't using the free agency like he expected. So, okay, I got a question. After that, he ain't taking more pay cuts. I got a question. Yeah. Why Ben wait to, like, year 28 of his career, right? <laughs> it was like to year do, 11. To decide to lose weight. Oh, I don't know. Like, they talking about how slim know. he looks. Why yeah. you wait till the end of your, bro, you know how many injuries you could have avoided during your <laughs> career if you would have just took that approach then? Mm-hmm. You got. This might be your last year, bro. You know what? I'm not going to say that. I don't know what your life plans and or what you got going on. I hope but, dude, you're going to wait till the end and want to be like, you know what? Let me get physically fit. Ben, you have always looked like you like <laughs> Chips Ahoy every season. He kind of got that Joe Thomas uh, thing going on. You know, yeah, Joe wait Thomas till the end. To, I know. And Ben, ben could have been. <laughs> he got yeah, he could have yeah, 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 <laughs> You know, he wait till the end to lose the weight you be right. how you want. But, right. you know, shout out to Ben. I love Ben. Thank you for, you know, bringing us a three sh- uh, Super Bowl, bringing us two championships, helping out. Willie with Parker you. gave y'all. Well, shout out to Willie Parker. Shout out to Willie Parker. Yeah. Willie Parker, I'm coming for you, too. I want to interview you. in North Carolina. <laughs> Them boys are bad, I tell you. Bro. But, uh, yeah, between Willie Parker, of course, Hines. Well, we had a great defense. Oh, Hines. I can't talk too much about the good the good old days. But still, yeah, staying on subject. good old days. But go ahead. Yeah, staying on subject. I feel the improvements we we've made um, definitely in the draft really gonna help us. We we got a, a really good young tight end too. Um, I think he's gonna be a really good backup for us. Okay. But um, it's just offense. I'm a little worried. Only because the line really. I ain't worried about nothing else. Just that. Just getting a new line and we have an aging quarterback already who has been injury prone like crazy. It ain't looking too good, but I feel you know we'll be all right though. Okay. So to get to that part, oh, yeah. Yeah. now we'll go to our next portion, which we call Cap or No Cap. It's one of our favorite games. Uh, you can hand my cap for me. Ah, and uh, I definitely got to uh, shout out my boys over here, the Burley Boys. You can check them Burley out on boys. Facebook. They are amazing people. Shout out to the owner, James. That's my boy right there. We go way back. And what they do? Oh, this is for, you know, a hard-working blue collar. Man. Oh, the blue they collar. They got all dude. types of gear. And that's what I'm put here in the video. You can check their merchandise out. And they got hats like this, which I'm going to put on for any time. Derek say something that's cat. <laughs> or I'm going to take it off or keep it off when it's no cat. And Derek oh, will do the same thing. Oh, keep it off. So it I'm going to throw... I'm going to throw you these scenarios. All right. All right. All right. Are you showing the shiner today? No. I'm putting it back. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. All right. Oh, all right. Go ahead. So, bold predictions. Let's start. Carolina Panthers. 
Bowl prediction. Bowl prediction. Uh, this is the Carolina game. Panthers will make it to the NFC Championship game. Cap. And I'll explain why. Okay. And that's no, really we'll explain why it's right, I cannot see the Carolina Panthers as great as they are making some improvements. I just can't see them getting past the Saints. And I can't they see them no getting Drew past. No Drew Brees. But they still got Hill. And, and, and if Hill don't work out, they still got. We've I, love I love Jameis. I love Jameis. I I love him in Florida State. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, crab legs. but yeah. <laughs> hey, if we were talking about Cam and laptop jokes back then. Leave him alone. <laughs> That's but, my quarterback, uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just feel like the Saints and Tampa still have that you know, division on lock, and I feel it's probably going to come down to them. But don't get me wrong. If Saints ain't healthy, he'll don't work out. Or Brady, something happened to them, or whatever. You know, they loaded, but I feel that's when the Panthers will make it. But I just feel like we're gonna shock the world right away. No, so I'm gonna have to cap on that. We're gonna shock the world. Uh, they shot. They shot. All right, all right. What we got next one? For me, um, if you want to pass out to me? I guess bold prediction for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Wait, you gotta take the cap off already. Then you put it on. You got... <laughs> just right, let no, me know. I'm about to end up putting <laughs> it back on. I already know I'm about to put it back on. But anyway, uh, bold prediction so, for the Steelers. I feel that we're gonna make the playoffs this year. Man, you don't think we're gonna make the playoffs? No. no Explain. No, no, this is why I don't feel like I ain't say make, Super Bowl. Yeah, no, 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 no. This is why I'm gonna say you're not gonna make the playoffs. All right. All right. I think the Ravens are gonna be better this year. That addition to Sammy Watkins going into that offense with that running game. I feel like him, Hollywood Brown, Mark Andrews at tight end. They're slowly giving Lamar Shout out Jackson. To, uh, Roy, I know you're gonna love that. You know Lamar. You know Lamar Jackson. You know you're gradually stacking the weapons to him mm-hmm. and giving it to him that he's growing into his position and his role, mm-hmm. and he's getting a new step. Like last year, he didn't need Sammy Watkins. True. This year, he's gonna need it because teams are gonna be adjusting. So anytime you can get a star, a different weapon that's different from what he's normally has had, that's always a plus. And I think Baltimore's defense is always Baltimore's defense. As long as you got the Calais Campbells healthy, even though they keep losing. This is the only team that keeps adding by subtraction when it goes to defense. They let you walk away. And then like five other people will be in the depth chart for them. They keep strong corners. They usually keep pretty decent safeties. They usually keep everything in front of them. And they try to be solid tacklers. So, they're going to get one playoff spot coming out of the AFC North. Yeah. Unfortunately, as much as I hate to say this, this is the team standing in the way. Actually, two teams, even though only one of them will make the playoffs. Who's that? The Cleveland Browns will be a team that will make the playoffs out of the AFC North. But, else, but also the reason why is because the Cincinnati Bengals will show out enough where they're going to get one or two games on Pittsburgh because let's just be quite honest. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, solid defense, Joe Mixon, that's a team to look out for. But just to say the team's coming out of the north, I feel like it'll be the Baltimore Ravens who will get the division. Cleveland will be right behind them, maybe about two games. But the reason they're going to get it over Pittsburgh is because they're probably going to get the win-loss over Cincinnati somehow. Either way, it's going to play out in some funky way that it's just going to be like Baltimore, Cleveland, Pittsburgh by like a half game from Cleveland getting in. I, I hate to say it that I way. I can't see Pittsburgh falling in, in last uh, one division. The thing is, it, is, it will be Cincinnati. But, but it, doesn't it seem like it makes sense that Cincinnati is going to be better? They're going to be better. They got a good defense. Not talking about them winning. Their defense ain't better. Think about if they, if they win five games this year, bro, they should have a parade. Okay, yeah. there should be a parade. And, and shout out to my boy Lamont. He, he played for them now. So oh, shout out to you. Y'all will win six just because of relation. Okay, <laughs> now, now, now. Also, what I also want to say is, is that like when we're looking at the AFC, and we're looking at like okay, the AFC South. The main question when you start talking playoffs, you want to see how many people can come out of a division, how this season going to be. It always affects each other. Mm-hmm. So if we're looking at the AFC South, Tennessee should get in by default. They shouldn't even have to play this year. Oh, well, because was, the Jackson. Texans are not going to stop them. Nah. Jacksonville's not going to stop them. I was going to say that's going to be the next one, bold prediction. Oh, let, who, let me let him get back on. Yeah, because. 
You don't gotta spend too much detail on why you chose it, but okay. Um, who's gonna win the Super Bowl? Who's gonna win the Super Bowl? Uh, to me. Yeah, go ahead. All oh, right. Go ahead. You go first. Who's gonna win the Super Bowl? Should I go with my heart, or should I go with my head? <laughs> I'm ready to put this cap on. <laughs> I'm going to go with my head. And this is what I'm going to tell you why. Because you got to go with something a little. You you, you, you kind of got to shake it up a little bit. But then you don't shake it up. The Kansas City Chiefs will get their revenge back. And they're going to bring another ring to the uh, the city of Mo- the state of Missouri. <laughs> They'll be happy with the cap. geography thing. Though. Cap. Oh, wow. Okay. As much as I love the Chiefs. I love Patrick Mahomes. I, I, feel, I, I feel like that loss of Super Bowl. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I just feel like that's that that's gonna hurt them, and I feel it's gonna shift them. I really feel like it's gonna boil down to, and it, I know people might say like you going off a paper album, but fuck it. This is what I think. It's gonna be down to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Tennessee Titans. That's what I think it is, and I'm gonna take that cap off of that. Okay, so and, I'm going to keep uh, my hat on to that one right there because I think that that is cap because at the simple end of the day, right, we're talking Julio Jones, freak. Mm-hmm. Derrick Henry, freak. freak. Offensive line, decent, okay? Uh, what's his name, Brown, the other receiver? Good. Defense, all right. Ryan Tannehill, I'm not putting him out there in the big lights. That's why I say cap to that because I don't feel that Tannehill, the brighter the lights, I feel the bigger the problem. If and they eventually him, you if they can't let keep him handling throw, the ball today. I was going to say, if they don't let him throw, if they let him throw less than 30 times, I feel they got a chance. See, <laughs> man, think about it. The deeper you go into the playoffs, he's going to have to throw that football. Uh-huh. He's going to have to throw it. And I just don't oh, feel shoot. he's just a game manager, and I don't think he's a great game manager. He is a quarterback who learned how to hand a football off efficiently and not throw interceptions. That's what he's doing well. Outside of that, he is staying in his lane. But the addition of Julio Jones also helps him out because now he can lob that shit. He and will Julio get more will interceptions this year with mm-hmm. Julio Jones being there. I guarantee you we can go back to this. He's going to have more interceptions because now he's going to be like this. Ooh, I got a new toy. Let me force it. And there, you think Julio standing out there is not going to get double teamed? Oh, now, don't get me wrong. But AJ though, he's going to look great against anybody in the AFC South. Yeah. Once we get out the AFC South, it's going to be must see TV to see how he's going to react. I, all right. So I think it's going to be down to them too. But I really think Tampa Bay is probably going to win it again. I and think Tom Brady really going to get a hangnail, and they're not going. <laughs> you heard it him first. All right, another one. All right, cap or no cap? All right. All right. Uh, Devin Booker is the modern-day Kobe Bryant. Cap or no cap? That's going around the Internet, so I had to throw that out there. (laughs) At least we agree on that one. Devin Booker is Devin Booker. Mm -hmm. Okay? I don't understand why, because he's inspired by a person who you would want your homeboy your child, your family member, you would want them to inspire to be like that. Kobe exemplifies greatness. Mm -hmm. He exemplifies a very high IQ, and he exemplifies a very dedicated work ethic and killer instinct. Mm -hmm. Not one thing that Devin Booker lacked. But why? Because he has similar qualities and characteristics. And because he has a certain respect and love for Kobe, we have to lob that pressure on him. He didn't ask. He didn't say, call me the new Mamba. He didn't say, call me baby Mamba. Don't call me Dope. Don't call me Devin. Call me Doby. No, he didn't say none of that. All he wants to do is set his own legend in these books as Devin Booker. Can we allow Devin Booker to be Devin Booker? All right. No cap, no cap. All right. NBA champions of of next year will be the Los Angeles Lakers. Cap or no cap? Give me a second on that one. No cap. No cap. 
No cap at all. I feel like they're reloading this year. I, really I kind of feel like I feel like one of three things is gonna happen in LA this year. Okay, we're either gonna see and like I just saw yesterday there was one package that they were talking about um with the Washington Wizards. Oh yeah. Where so, Russell Westbrook will come to LA mm-hmm. and um LA would possibly give up Kyle Kuzma. Mm-hmm. Uh I wanna say Contavious Caldwell Pope yep. and Taylor Horton. Um I could Taylor Horton Tucker. Mm-hmm. And don't get me wrong, I think Taylor Horton Tucker is a great young guy, and LeBron and them tried to keep them, him as long as they could to help him develop, but the league has changed. It's a win-now mode in this league. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if you're telling me that Bradley Beal can get a, a Kyle Kuzma and some other pieces like that, right, and L.A. can get a Russell Westbrook, mm-hmm. that's step one to – Igniting it, but I'm more interested in the Dame Lillard part of this situation Lillard, yeah. because I don't want to feel that Dame is coming to LA. But for some reason, when I feel that something is not going to happen, it turns around and it happened. And so for the some reason, went in the Super Bowl. I'm not delusional. <laughs> But shout out to Stiller fans because, you know, y'all have been a great fan base for your organization, so that's always admirable. But back to the Lakers in in general, the Lakers know how to win. LeBron knows how to win. They know how to put the pieces there that normally keep them as a contender. Even this year with AD being injured, I wasn't 100% sold that Phoenix was going to beat L.A. I kind of felt LeBron was going to do some Space Jam type of stuff, and somehow they was going to win that series. But when Devin Booker ran to that baseline and two-hand dunked that rascal, I said, ooh, this is the first time that I've seen the Monstars or the Goons win the game in Space Jam. And <laughs> Phoenix really did Space Jam LeBron this year. It's funny you say, see space, you say Space Jam. Yeah. All right, cap or no cap, Space Jam 2 is better than Space Jam 1. I have a take on that, but it dis- see, that's cap what I'm saying. No that's going to seem so disrespectful. Ca- cap or no cap. Did you say Space Jam 2 was better than 1? Yeah, cap or no cap. That's a cap. That's a cap. And I, I, I'll take my... No. Please let me explain on what I'm saying with this, because, see, I kind of hate it that you rephrased it, <laughs> phrased it like that. Because that's, 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 these are just is, hot topics this, on the internet. That's why I, I throw this, them out there. This, this is what I took. This is what I took from this, okay? Uh-huh. I was an avid fan of Michael Jordan. I was an avid fan of Space Jam. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan of LeBron James, and I'm a fan of this movie. Mm-hmm. I think this is a great movie for kids. I think this is a great lesson for parents and kids. It, 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 was, it was great. Definitely. I don't know why people are saying that. It was a horrible movie. The story for Space Jam 2, talking the story, mm-hmm. was better than Space Jam 1. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if it's just my bias. Of just the first Space Jam. That's what it is. I still lot feel the Space Jam one was the better movie. Maybe it's just me about originality. You know, the first thing of it. It was the soundtrack that got you. Yeah, I, I did believe I could fly. <laughs> I would That's say shout out to Soul Boy, but I believe I would be careful. So we just gonna believe that we can fly. <laughs> this will be the first and last episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Before I even get you off the ground, that. you know what I mean. But I just want to say this. Shout out to LeBron James. And the reason why I want to say shout out to LeBron James is because of the simple fact that, like, in the first Space Jam, all Mike had to do was be Mike. Be a cool version of his self. That's all Mike had to do. That's not very hard to do. Mike being Mike. But LeBron had to go into the dynamic of being a father. And the dynamic with a kid who is not his kid. And he's got to try to conjure these emotions and these feelings. And this dude has not acted in what was like two, a train wreck, which I thought he was great in train wreck. But to do a full feature movie and have no acting and you've got to pull range of emotions, which let's be honest, he didn't really do a good job of it. But he's an athlete. That's not what he gets paid to do. But I just felt the attempt. Sometimes getting out of your comfort zone can show pure greatness. His, I'm a living example of that. And he is a living example. <laughs> His film company, I think, already is worth $67 million, people. 
He's already in a whole nother level. And for him to step out, he didn't have to do this. He entertained kids. Yes, he's getting a check. You gonna do something? Get a check? Get a check. But he entertained your children for two hours. Some of y'all can't even entertain y'all children 15 minutes. And LeBron James entertained your children for two hours. If I was LeBron James, I'd be like this. You're welcome. Yeah. Hey, I, I think those some good takes. Some good uh, felt cap or no cap. Yeah, I felt it. You got one you want to throw in there, a cap or no cap moment or before we wrap up? The Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, fuck them. The Arizona, <laughs> the Arizona. And that's to you, J.J. Watt. You portrayed us. You told your brother you wanted to join us, and we was ready for you. We had cap space ready for you, and you went and took the money like you said you wasn't. Forget you. I still respect you, though. Thank you for all the, the, the community work you do for uh, Houston. But forget you, man. I'm sorry. You really felt that. I felt that, man. I was ready to just go off on JJ. I've been holding that in for months. But I love JJ as a person, so it's hard, but still. I'm glad, I'm forget glad you. you was able to use this platform. To All right, now, I'll, I'll, let you, uh, I'll let you ask the question. You know. It's not really a question. I just had a, a, had a throw bold out there. prediction. Bold prediction, cap or no cap. One, the Arizona Cardinals will win the NFC West this year. And the Arizona Cardinals, I feel, will be in your NFC Championship game this year, and Kyler Murray will be a contender for MVP, people. He will be a contender for MVP. Now, do you want me to tell you why, or do you want to go ahead and say how you feel? I already knew he was going to do it because he has a problem with J.J. Watt and his bias. But Not hey, this why. I, I like Murray. I just don't think this is the year. Okay. Next year, though? Okay. Next year? This is why, Maybe. This is why this year it has to happen. Why? Well, we don't know if DeAndre going to retire. How many years we got with DeAndre? <laughs> so, well, yeah, so, that, that so, interesting. So, yeah, it's, kind of a, it's kind of like win that whole mentality and, right now. And he said he got nine years in him, but so, he'll retire right now. So you got Hopkins on one side of the ball. Mm-hmm. You have a, ha- a healthy and happy and rejuvenated A.J. Green okay. on the other side. Okay. And Larry hasn't, Larry hasn't retired yet, has he? he well, He's a free agent. Larry will come back and play at the three or the four with Christian Kirk and with Kenyon Drake at running back and with Kyler Murray having them options. Do you think about it? A.J. Green will be able to pick you off at 10 to 15 yards. DeAndre Hopkins, wherever he wants to spray across the floor, uh, even if it's Kirk or Larry Fitzgerald, you're going to have little pockets for Murray just to get the ball out with that little quick, that Cliff Kingsbury just, that Nintendo football offense that he got. I, and, I mean, don't get me wrong, it has results. But when you're talking about a J.J. Watt, Chandler Jones, Isaiah Simmons, what's that now? You got to love his name here, Buddha Baker. You, you got to love a team when you got a Shout dude named Buddha Baker on the squad, all right? And those cats there, I feel like, one, Seattle, they're running back and second receiver away. Yeah. San Francisco, they didn't get Aaron Rodgers, people. They didn't get Aaron Rodgers. So they're still a couple of years behind right now. And then you're just looking at it, the Rams. The Rams are the only team that can really stand in the Arizona Cardinals' way. But I'm going to say it here. You can call me blasphemous. I don't believe in Matt Stafford. I don't. <laughs> I believe him more now that he's with the Rams away from Detroit. I don't no feel that Detroit was the whole problem. I feel like you Matt Stafford was the problem. Matt Stafford looked like a great quarterback as long as he had Megatron. After that, this Joker's numbers was horrible. And I've seen quarterbacks with horrible receivers still get decent numbers, and Matt Stafford did not show me that. Watch Jared Goff, Antoine Vincent Jones, this for you. This might be the biggest take we got. The Detroit Lions will win eight games this year <laughs> with Jared Goff. <laughs> they will win. That's what you were going to say. They go into the I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> the Detroit I'll Lions will win eight games. I'll people. take that. The Lions will win eight games. Shout out to all my peeps out here. Uh, thank you for joining us for episode two. Of this, Don't hate my this, take. This I hope you didn't take my. I uh, didn't hate my take. I hope you didn't hate these take. But if you did, it's all that's right. the point of the show. It's all right. You know, you never know where I might pull up at or have another. Don't hate my take. 
Thank you for tuning in. Check out episode 32 that's going to drop Tuesday. Hi. Check out uh, Sessions going to be coming back real soon as well. You got them Sessions coming. So, I mean, and constant interviews. So, I mean, you guys are definitely going to be entertained. D, thanks again. Hey, man, anytime, all the time, anytime. Uh, I think you're going to be a fan favorite. Some um, might find you a little crazy with some of the predictions, but hey, that's, that's, that's the charm. You got to look at it. You got to look at it every angle. You got to look at it every angle. And, oh, and to his peeps, I love y'all dearly. I, I'm happy to be part of the family. I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm proud. I'm very proud of where you came from, from where you started. You know, we've had a lot, a lot of conversations and little mm-hmm. moments or whatever. And to see where you've gotten to, man, you become and where you're going with this. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, it, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Support the podcast. Support all the ventures that he's working with. Yeah, you too. Hey, anybody that he's sponsoring, anybody that... Bluer Futures. Yeah, shout out to check the Burley Boys. Yeah, them Burley... I just love the name. Oh, yeah, yeah, them Burley Boys. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that. Man. I like that. Shout out to you, James. Shout out to you, Austin. Yeah. You know, for uh, starting this up. You know, push it out as best as I can. Thank you for supporting the show as well. And, and remember, success starts with a dream. Success starts with a dream. All you got to do is have a dream. And put that for you. Amen to that. All right. D, thank you again. Ah, thank Episode you. two thank wrapped you. up.